Welcome on Prompt Engineering for Salesforce Developers. My name is Jakub Stefaniak. I'm VP of Technology Strategy and Innovations and Akiva Labs, where as part of my daily job, I'm helping App Exchange partners to implement generative AI into their products. If you want to see some awesome demos in App Exchange Lending, you can see what we developed in Capture in the last weeks. But on top of this, in the last months, I was preparing some recommendation for our engineering department, how to apply prompt, uh, prompts and generally AI into the daily job of Salesforce developers. And I would like to share with you some findings about this. I suppose that you are here because you are a Salesforce developer, which means that people are paying you for getting things done, for delivering software which works. On top of this, you are obligated to get things right. So code quality, having no bugs is the basic of the job. And if we do not negotiate about getting things done and getting things right, the only difference is how fast you can deliver your task, which means that the difference between good developer and average is just this performance of delivery. With this three things in mind, when I tried to prepare first version of this presentation, I asked ChatGPT, what exactly is prompt engineering? It was not very helpful. In June, he told me I have no information on this term because all of this is a very new stuff for all of us. But I suppose you didn't live under the stone. You've seen keynote yesterday, so I'm not going to cover super basic what is prompt engineering, how to make basic prompts, and so on. On the other hand, as well, I'm not going to speak about designing systems with large language models. If you would like to speak about this in something that I'm more than happy to discuss after the session. If you don't have this basic, so you never use ChatGPT, you have no idea what is generative AI, I strongly recommend to go on the deep learning page. There is a one hour course about prompt engineering, which cover all these super basics, how to use classification, sentiment, how to make basic prompts. It can be like one of the best one hour invested in your career. Assuming that we are on the same page, what we are going to cover today. We will start with definition. What exactly is prompt engineering? Then I'm going to speak about three more advanced techniques which are especially useful for Salesforce developers. And at the end, I'm going to share five use cases which my colleagues from engineering department told me that really work. So from all of this recommendation, what really is helping them to deliver more, more value to our customers. My definition, you are not going to find it on Wikipedia, is that for me, prompt engineering is like software engineering, but with a new programming language. And if you think about this, if you would like to make new 3D computer game with Apex or Lightning Web components, it's going to be a disaster. Not because Apex is a bad programming language, but because it works well for some cases, and for other things, it's just not a good tool. The same with prompt engineering. So. I'm saying it's similar to software development because it's a very iterative process. You have to start with your idea, execute this idea, and if the results are not perfect, you have to just think why, what happened, and adjust to it. So the high-level guidelines is to be clear and specific. AI is not your new best friend. You do not have to be nice to AI. Be precise. Then, if the results are not working for you, Think why. Maybe you were not specific enough. Maybe you used uh, misleading words. And then refine and repeat. It's simple like that. In terms of the more advanced techniques, which are not so common, but especially for development use cases are very helpful, they are free. Role-based prompting, using delimiters, and providing examples to AI, so few-shot prompting. The role-based is the simplest one. We ask AI to behave as specific persona. Salesforce expert, senior developer. So for example, if I just ask, what is the impact of local development in Salesforce ecosystem? I'm going to have a Salesforce marketing content that it has many people to build apps. It's awesome, I heard it from marketing team, but I can use prompt engineering to say, answer this question as an expert in managing technical debt. And now the results are much more meaningful. So AI is going to tell me that, okay, it's helpful because I can develop things faster, but we know these problems. It can as well strongly increase the technical debt if we do not manage it correctly. So just by using the role, the results are much more meaningful to me. Second technique, 
using delimiters. So making sure that AI understand what is my request and what is input to this request. Simple example, I'm going to use some Apex code and ask, explain for me this code delimited by triple backstick. And what you see is it really triple backstick with Apex code inside. Simple like that, make sure that AI understand what is my request and what is input for this request. And the last technique, providing examples to AI, so something called few shots technique. By default, if you explain AI in natural language what you want to achieve, classify the comment for me into neutral, negative, positive. My comment is solid improvement based on feedback. I'm waiting for the sentiment. I get the response positive. Lots of text, right? For development, another technique is to just provide a few examples. Solid improvement based on feedback, positive. This is just terrible, negative. And this is just bad, not merging, empty space. Please notice, I'm not saying what I want to achieve. There is no request classified for me, just examples. But AI can find the pattern and give me answer negative. It's extremely powerful when I want to generate metadata, example of cause, and this kind of the things which are easy to be affected by what we call hallucinations. OK, so with these three advanced techniques, let's now take a look on the use cases when, as developers, we can immediately benefit from using generative AI and prompt engineering. Based on feedback from our company colleagues, there are like five things which are worth to speak about. Generating diagrams, metadata, code, and for code as well, explanations and refactoring. I will start with diagrams. And especially if you are a solution architect and you make diagrams on a daily basis, probably it's not going to be something fancy for you. But if you are a developer and maybe once, twice a month you have to make some diagrams, it can save you lots of time. I'm going to use ChatGPT for this, but you can get the same result with any LLM, including Salesforce technology. So for example, I'm taking a text about how the platform case is implementing a specific app. I'm putting it to large language model, and I'm getting a nice markup. This markup either can be copy paste to one of the open source editors, or with ChatGPT Plus, I'm immediately getting the diagram itself. The sequence diagram is pretty good. It found the right actors, user, application, platform cache. And in a meaningful way, it found all the steps based on the documentation which maybe my product owner prepared a moment ago. Similarly, I can take a few classes which I developed and ask, prepare for me UML diagram. What I get is, of course, the markup because it's still like natural language processing. But the diagram is super good. It's the nice example how dependency injection works. We have interface, two classes which implement it. We have some service classes which utilize it. So based on my experience with making diagrams, if it's not part of my job, it will take me probably a good half hour to build something like that. With LLM, it was just a moment. And last but not least, the data model. It's part of the Salesforce documentation about license management app. And the output, something like that. As you see, it's not perfect. Master detail and lookup looks the same. It should be probably a little bit different but it found correctly the right objects. It was able to find relationship, and I can now easily edit this diagram because the output was just this markup, which I can, of course, edit on my own. OK, the second case, metadata generation. I can just take the diagram code, which I get a moment ago, and ask like large language model to create for me a nice metadata, which I can deploy to Salesforce. And example from my practice, I was like not long time ago creating custom object which the, with the normalized uh, data model. Six custom fields per last month, six for two months ago, three months ago, and so on. In total, 72 custom fields. Doing it manually can be the most boring hour of my life. With LLM, I was able to get it like that in a matter of a few minutes. The most interesting part is code generation. So if I'm very specific and asking it to create for me Lightning Web component with specific header, some dropdown, and some button, currently OpenAI can send me back something like that. HTML markup, the JavaScript controller, and CSS with even information, what can I adjust with this code? It's not a rocket science. It's a relatively simple code. And from this perspective, 
it's maybe saving me some time. The same for Apex. I can take my lookup controller and ask LLM to generate for me unit test. And for Apex, as you see, the unit tests are pretty nice. We have positive and negative cases, so it's checking some conditions. I have four different unit cases generated. Even I have a test data factory which work together with this class. It's a code which I can copy and immediately deploy to Salesforce. I'm saying that it's not rocket science, because from our experience, the capabilities of solving difficult tasks are very limited. So I see that AI in this context is like junior developer. I must be very specific what I want to achieve, give a good direction, and most of all, be able to make a code review, verify the results. The only difference is that with junior developer, I will have to wait a few hours to get this code. With AI, it was a matter of seconds, so it can save me as well lots of time because I do not have to make this basic step on my own. Code explanation is a little bit more interesting because, especially when I'm working with a new system, it's a simple example, but it can be like a few thousand lines of spaghetti code, which I immediately get some insight how it works. I can ask to generate maybe comments to help me to understand it. Once in my career, I had a project for a customer from Italy, and you know what? They have code written in Italian. It was fun. I had to use Duolingo to learn some Italian. Now I will just use this for helping me understand this code base. And the last case, code refactoring. For me personally, the most interesting one. The JavaScript code which you see, I developed on my own. I was thinking that it was not a bad code, I put it in the production. But as part of preparation for this presentation, I just used the role-based technique and asked, hey, you are expert in clean code, please help me to refactor it. What I get? A very nice list of potential problems with the code. Deep nesting, duplication, potential null reference errors, I admit to all of these three mistakes, and JavaScript code, which is shorter, cleaner, and generally better comparing to what I created on my own. So even with having this expertise for doing good stuff, especially when I'm working alone on a ticket, it can help me because other way I will have to make pull requests and wait for another developer. Now I can use generative AI and front engineering to improve quality of my code on my own before going to another human reviewer. So from this perspective, AI can be literally like automated pattern, a partner for doing code review and software development on your own pace. And I hope you didn't come here just to listen to the presentation, but you want to apply some of these things in your daily job. So how to do it? The first question is to decide when prompt engineering can be applied as part of your task. And probably the most important part is to ask yourself, is the accuracy of the output important? If I'm looking for brainstorming ideas, for finding potential problems, accuracy is not critical, then definitely I can use AI. If it is, because for example, I want to create a code and deliver a working solution, the second question is, do I have expertise to verify, to make the code review of this junior developer generated code and make sure that it's working? If I'm an expert and I can do it, next question is, do I have time to do it? Do, am I willing to take responsibility? It's a common problem that if AI is going to work 95% cases, we are going to watch TikTok, click next, 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 and then you are not taking responsibility. That can be a trap, so make sure that you have time and you can really verify these results. If you don't have both knowledge or time, probably it's better to do not use prompt engineering, just make it manually using Salesforce documentation. And by the way, this diagram as well was generated via prompt engineering. So I make some bullets, I put it with ChatGPT, and I get something like that. So maybe it's not the most beautiful diagram which I created in my life, but for even something like that, like decision tree, it works pretty well. And especially comparing to doing it in a PowerPoint, it can save some time, right? So I'm not saying that if you are a Salesforce developer, at top of getting things done, getting things right, and getting things fast, you should now start using prompt engineering everywhere instead of brain, because it's going to be a serious mistake. I'm saying that prompt engineering, when you put some efforts to learn about this, can help you to get things right, get things better and faster. Some people are saying that AI is going to steal your job very soon. Personally, I'm skeptical about this, 
But I have a gut feeling that if you can do your job better, faster, and reduce number of mistakes, at least it's going to positively impact your salary. And between you and me, it's always better to have a little bit higher salary. So I think it should be good enough motivation to start using the skills. And so let's summarize what we've spoken about. Definition, my definition is going to probably change soon, so only for today, that prompt engineering is like a software engineering in a new programming language. It's good to put some efforts to prepare for using new technology, to understand the limitation, understand when it works, and then you can easily get much more benefits. We've spoken about three more advanced techniques, which especially for Salesforce developers can help you to get a good result. Role-based prompting, using the limiters, so specifying what is your request and what is input to this request, and FewShot, which is technical name for just providing examples of AI. What works for you, what doesn't work, to help it find the pattern, what is the right solution. And then we've spoken about five use cases when, from our experience, you immediately can start getting some value. Generating diagrams for both sequence, UML, classes, decision trees, any kind of diagrams, literally. Generating metadata, simple things like page layouts, custom fields for sure, validation rules, regex, that's for sure. But I've spoken with a few ISVs who are successfully using this few shot programming technique to create flows and more complex automation. So it's something a little bit harder to learn and master, but technically it's possible. And then we've spoken about code, how to generate code being precise and thinking that we are speaking with automated junior developer, how to use AI to help us to quickly understand the old messy code, and how to use AI as automated DAC, which help us with code refactoring and improving our own quality. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>